weeks ago, ten young men set out to court a mysterious young woman known to them only as Roxanne. But this would be no ordinary courtship. They could never meet face to face and they could rely only on pen and paper and the power of the heart. For inspiration, the suitors took the names of famous poets as their pen names. Browning quickly became the front runner when he won the first challenge, a snowshoe race and quiz about Roxanne. He made a strong first impression as a man who was goal-oriented, a quality that Roxanne shares. In their first writing task, the suitors were asked to write a short mystery story with some tips from the talented mystery writer, Deborah Nicholson. You have to open with a bang. Roxanne had the difficult challenge of deciding whom to send home first. She had only the stories. Oh, I can't read this. And her one meeting with Browning to go by. But in the end, it was Wilde's penmanship and story ending that did him in, and he was the first Dear John. Nine suitors were left to croon in a country singing challenge led by Canadian singer-songwriter Tim Huss. Tim was mighty impressed with Burns' rendition of Tim's song, Pipeline, and awarded him the meeting with Roxanne. a big party and nobody showed up, how would you react? <laughs> Burns and Roxanne had a fun and flirty connection. <laughs> That's a funny question. But Burns remembered his new best buddy when it came time for the writing task and passed on his alternate reward to Whitman. While the other suitors had to write their own country breakup songs, Whitman got the benefit of Tim Huss's songwriting expertise and guitar playing backup during his performance. I believe that everything is gonna be alright. Whitman impressed everyone with his musical ability, but sadly, Poe did not. It was a time of confusion, a time I never understood. We were, we were locked in a heartbeat, one that was no good. And Roxanne sent him home. Eight suitors remained to channel their best Romeo as they performed a soliloquy from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Shelley won the acclaim of celebrated playwright Sharon Pollock, who chose him as the next reward winner. Be not our maid. Since she is envious, her vestal livery is but sick and green. Really headstrong. At their meeting, Roxanne felt that Shelley was doing more showboating than sharing. I felt that he was performing his answers and not really trying to connect with me. Love is but a game. But when the suitors were challenged to write and perform their own soliloquies about their philosophy on love, and I, minstrel will not walk through shadows, these darkest absence of reflection. It was Whitman's heart of darkness that made Roxanne rethink his courtship, so she sent him home. Seven suitors were left to aim Cupid's arrow when accomplished archery expert Don Mugford showed them how to go for the target. Browning's arrow landed closest to the mark, and he scored a second meeting with Roxanne. But Browning missed the bullseye when he refused to open his heart to Roxanne. It's part of my personal life, too, and I don't know if I'm really super comfortable sharing it with the world, right? And had a heated meltdown instead. For the writing challenge, Dynamo poet Sherry D. Wilson mentored the suitors as they reworked a poem by their pen namesakes. But Browning just couldn't relate, so he went his own way and wrote an original poem. And I handed it in, and. I didn't even care that it was horrible, because, uh, really, I'm just not in the mood for sharing today. Roxanne didn't appreciate Browning's temperamental nature, so she sent him packing. Six suitors remained to step up and two-step in the next challenge with delightful dance instructor Betty Lou Brown. But in a one-two twist, Wilde and Whitman stepped back onto the dance floor for a second try to woo Roxanne. <laughs> Blake won over Betty Lou Brown and gained a meeting and a dance with Roxanne. Oh, oh, see, that's what I was worried about. Later on, the suitors had to dig deep and write a memoir about a life-changing event. With the emotional stakes on the rise, Roxanne was tasked with sending home three suitors. But in another surprise twist, she was given the chance to prolong the love life of one of those three.
So, she said goodbye to Blake, whose charm wasn't enough to spark a flame in her soul, and for a second time, Roxanne said farewell to the Dark Horse Whitman, whose intensity didn't mesh with her light spirit. Six suitors remain to shake things up in a cocktail challenge. Baudelaire mixed the drink that impressed bartender Martina Bohr. I'm gonna go with the pretty girls make me emo. Congratulations, Baudelaire. And he won a meeting with Roxanne. Are you a smoker? <laughs> no, I am not a smoker. Later on, Harlequin romance writer C.J. Carmichael coached the suitors on writing their own love scenes. That you're in his shoes when you're writing this scene. What is he seeing? What is he feeling? What is he thinking? And even though showboating Shelley was voted out of the lesson in love by his rival suitors, I'll see you guys later, yeah. We know you don't need the help. Yeah. He was up to the steamy challenge. I talk about connection, like this is connection. Roxanne was tempted by all the passionate pros, but this time she had to say goodbye to two more suitors. While Baudelaire failed to impress Roxanne in his meeting, and Longfellow never had the chance to win a meeting, Ultimately, their letters failed to sustain them. Four remaining suitors grabbed the bull by the horns and went a little bit cowboy. Shelley won the field challenge in a second meeting with Roxanne. Kathy. But in a surprise twist, Roxanne's best friend Kathy stepped in to ask the questions. Then with the wisdom of renowned cowboy poet Mike Puhalo, the suitors discovered just how tough it was to write a poem in the cowboy way. If you can honestly portray your emotion, then you're doing your job as an artist, as a poet. Finally, after a great ride, Coleridge had to turn in his spurs when Roxanne sent him home. And now, three suitors are left to woo Roxanne. Wild, the comeback kid. Burns, the funny fellow with a heart of gold. And Shelley, the smooth operator turned soulful suitor. Who will win her heart? Stay tuned for the spectacular finale to The Letters, Rediscovering the Art of Courtship. Good morning, Good morning suitors. First there were ten, now there are three. Today will be filled with lots of excitement for you three. But first, a word from Roxanne. Good morning, suitors. While we're down to the final three, congratulations on making it to this point. I am so excited. I think that, you know, a career or um, through your personal life, fitness, spiritual, there's all these different areas of, of your life that you can evolve and, and be a better person. And I think that successful people to me know where they're going, they envision that in every aspect of their lives, and then they move towards that every day so that they know where they're going. I mean, this is kind of a gimme for me. I kind of figured that this is the way that it would go. Like I said before, put me in a room with 10 guys and you're gonna notice me, and she did. I, Roxanne's never met me. Roxanne, um, other than three or four letters, doesn't know much about me. Um, she's met Burns twice, Percy twice, never, never met me. So I think, uh, unfortunately, I'm, uh, a sitting duck here. Well, obviously I want to meet her, so I hope she picks me. And I'm still leery of Percy, and I don't think she knows enough about Oscar, so I'm putting myself as the, you know, in top two, and I hope that something goes my way. Good luck on your eighth field task. Think back to the beginning, and you'll be fine. He can't even get his skis on, oh my god. Hi Don, how are you today? Excellent. Good, good. So it looks like we're going to do some skiing today. Yeah, I couldn't pick more of a beautiful day. I know, it's great. So um, I'm actually a, a fairly good skier. Okay. Uh, I have skied before. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I always fall at the end? You know, maybe you could tell me how I could look 
cooler skiing because I know that's really kind of what it's all about. <laughs> Tips go downhill. Yes. That's number one. Yep. Tips are pointed up when you get out of the bus or wherever you are. And yep. then the main thing is to smile. That's smile. the best way oh, to look that cool. Way to look cool? Yes, definitely. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suiters, welcome to Bubblegum Hill. This is Don Pittman. Don's gonna be uh, helping you guys out, showing you a few tips for this next challenge. It's called the Great Ski Race. Your goal is to hit three stations. Now, at each station is a selection of food items, but gentlemen, only one item is Roxanne's favorite item. Now, you're gonna have to do some thinking back to the very first field challenge, and you're gonna have to remember what those items are. If you know them now, keep them to yourself because this will be your advantage. And then when you get to the bottom of the hill, there's gonna be a basket there, and that basket will have your pen name on it. You're gonna load up the items in the basket, and of course, you're gonna write a note, and that note is going to invite Roxanne on a romantic picnic for two. Roxanne then will choose the winning basket, and gentlemen, do your best, because guess who's watching you? And I'm not telling you from where. Give us some pointers. Gentlemen, pay close attention. So what you want to do is just give yourself some foot. So I'm not sure about what the challenge is, but there's got to be a skier in the bunch, don't you think? Across the hill, I'm going to let your skis go in parallel manner. Okay. And then all you do is to control your skis. Good, there you go. I kind of need um, somebody who's kind of on the same uh, par as me from athleticism and uh, physical activity. He doesn't have to be the best skier in the world, and maybe that's not his sport, um, but he's, I can tell a lot by a guy and how athletic he is by how he skis. Are you ready, guys? Ready. Do it. Get set, go! Excuse me, oh my god. I only see two, I see red jacket guy, I see gray pants guy. Oh, and this is the other guy? I really like a guy who's athletic and knows how to play sports. Be a bit, he needs to be kind of strong and, and uh, know how to stop. I put peanut butter cups, because it's a cup more delicate than ceramic. Uh, strawberries, I wasn't here for that clue. And champagne, because who doesn't like champagne? Yeah. Uh, I grabbed uh, bear claws, a chocolate and little nuts, you know. Um, a cup of hot chocolate with some nuts that elephants love from the initial day. Um, I grabbed raspberries, and I thought they were cherries, so I grabbed them by mistake. I was the first to all three stations, because I went for slow and steady as opposed to just bombing past the tables. <laughs> you know what? These two guys are some of my best friends in the world. I love these guys a lot. And, uh, you know, one of them needed this event more than me. I thought, let me just wipe out now, make it look good at least on camera. <laughs> let me blow a ski, and then maybe one of these two guys will, you know, hopefully pull her socks up and maybe at least get a chance to meet her before they go home. So, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's oh. fine. You know what? Honestly, it's my note that's gonna make all the difference in the world. And the winner is... Birds. Hold it out. You will get... The rabbit. I liked his note. I like, well, first of all, I like the, the contents. I like the champagne and strawberries. And uh, I just really liked his note. I liked his note a lot. Burns, you can say hi to Roxanne. Hi, Roxanne. Hi, Burns. We thought it would be fun to indulge you both in the treats that Burns won in your honor on the ski race, Roxanne. And that means <laughs> treating you to some of your favorite things, so just so he can get proximity. <laughs> she's this far away from you when she stretches out her hand. Okay. So you're gonna try and make it to her mouth. Oh, geez. <laughs> so if you take your left hand and put it right in front of you, you'll feel where there's a tray here. There. And here's the other end of the tray. Okay. 
And there's the lucky lady. <laughs> Hello. All right. All right. Okay. Try not to poke your eye out. Here it comes. <laughs> Fabulous. Is that the You're mouth? You're doing great. <laughs> oh. She's got it? Great. I'll give you a minute to shut up. It in my mouth. <laughs> you know how many times I've heard that? <laughs> so I'll give you a situational kind of example and you can tell me what would happen if we were in a relationship. So you're in your career and you're focused on um, and what you're doing and you're really happy at it and I say to you, um, you know what, I would really like to travel around the world for a year and just take off and just go. Um, what, how, how do you deal with that situation? I'd go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't gone traveling yet, so there's, I'm held down by very few things, so I'd like to, uh, I'd go for sure. Like, make sure everything's, you know, we're not going to lose everything when we get back, but even then, if it's worth it, it could be a good enough adventure to just say we'll start over. Keep talking, keep talking. Yeah. Bob, are, we Bob, Bob, Bob. are we biting? Bob, Bob. Is that your chin? Yeah. What are we, oh, there we go. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. Biggest regret? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I guess my biggest regret would be that I didn't follow my heart uh, sooner. Um, I'm now kind of um, really in tune with my heart and my soul and where I'm going and, um, you know, my passions and following, you know, dance and music and uh, my creativeness and um, what I'm really good at and not thinking so much about uh, money. I was very focused on um, my career and um, I have to pay off my house and I have to get a nice car and I have to have all the nice clothes and you know all the stuff and then when I had it I felt very empty because inside I just didn't fill myself with the most important uh, things which are things that make me internally happy in my soul. Uh, so I'm doing that now, um, but you know what, I, I kind of wish I would have done it a little bit sooner. Getting a mass of ourselves. Cheers. <laughs> to, making, <laughs> That's to making totally, total idiots of ourselves. Yeah. On Cheers. I really enjoyed my meeting with Burns. I thought it was uh, the best meeting that I've had uh, so far. Usually my girlfriends are either laughing or screaming at me. So, and you know, they can laugh during sex too, that's fine. <laughs> this, this thing never turns off, my mouth never stops. So uh, hopefully there'll be more laughing than screaming in the end. I talk a lot about connection and and how I just can know and I just feel it, and that, that was pretty much it. Like, it just, all the stuff that you talk about, if, if you can't have fun and laugh with somebody and the energy's there and you're joking back and forth and you just want to have fun with that person, then, then that, you know, that's what it's all about. Gentlemen. It's been an exciting day so far, especially for you, Burns. <laughs> Hot talk. But now it's time for reflection. I want you guys, with this writing challenge, to give some thought about what brought you here and how the journey's been so far. Your writing challenge today will be to write a letter to Roxanne sharing your thoughts about this journey that you're on and think about what you'll bring forward into your life from this experience. Good luck. I did the laundry list. I went through all the guys that I met, uh, listed off what I gained from them, and then just kind of said, thanks for the opportunities, thanks for the laughs, and I improvised a poem, and yeah, I didn't, I don't know, I'm not a good salesman, especially on something that you can't really sell, like a person. So either she likes me or she doesn't, and I am perfectly at peace with that. 
I don't know how she's going to respond, but you know, I think I was honest and sincere. I think uh, I said everything that I needed to say, and um, hopefully she makes a decision that she thinks is right for her. That's really all that matters. It was one letter that, you know, let her know how you feel. And I have nothing to lose. I think it's a huge accomplishment to uh, come in, you know, the top three um, after being the first one eliminated. Yeah, he's very passionate. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because his writing's kind of heavy. Roxanne. I've brought a very special surprise. I'd see that. like you to meet Anne Veers. Hi, Anne. This is Roxanne. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Roxanne Anne Veers is a handwriting specialist. Okay. And she's had a chance to look at some of the excerpts or handwriting, some of the letters from the suitors, and she has a few things to share with you. Well, let's start with uh, Mr. Burns. Okay. He's a calm and cool and collected type of individual. Mm -hmm. okay, he may not show his emotions and his feelings very easily. Okay. So it's not that he doesn't have them, but he won't express them freely and easily. Mm -hmm. He's better at focused tasks as opposed to multitasking. How, how do you know that from just looking at the writing? It seems like a, like a lot of information that you can get from just writing. How do, how do you get it? That is a lot of information, isn't it? Yes, usually when a person has very small handwriting, it takes a lot of concentration and focus ah, to write small, and okay. his writing is on the small side. All right, Mr. Percy. Okay, Mr. Percy tends to be optimistic. Okay. And uh, likes to look at the bright side of things. Mm -hmm. Some of his handwriting, especially his signature, had an upward slant to it. Okay. So when your handwriting has an upward slant, it shows that you're... Oh, interesting. You look up. Oh, cool. Things. Okay. Yes. So now, Mr. Oscar, what can you tell me about what can you tell me about him? He tends to be a little bit more ruled with his heart. Yeah. Okay. So he's a little more on the emotional side. Mm -hmm. So you could probably pull at his heartstrings a little bit. And yeah, I picked, <laughs> I picked up that from his writing as well. Oh, it's interesting. Good. Yeah, he's very passionate. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because his writing's kind of heavy. So, you know, he'll absorb emotional experiences and he'll remember them. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask about mine? Sure. Let's take a look at your handwriting. See, your writing's got a bit of an upward slant to it, too. So positive. So that shows me you were feeling really good at the time you wrote this. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say you tend to be ruled with your heart, mm -hmm. so usually people that are quite emotional, they like, like mm -hmm. to be romantic, probably really like to be told that you, you're cared about, and when you are with somebody special, you probably would really like to hear, you know, I love you, or mm -hmm. how special you are, and, mm -hmm. that, and it has to be genuine, but that means a lot to you, you really like to hear that. I do, yeah. Today was so much fun. It has probably been my best day yet. I felt like we were just a crazy couple on a crazy date. I have learned a lot about myself, friendship, courtship, and of course you. In the brief and very awkward meetings and through your letters, I feel the birth of a very deep connection. Paramount to this whole week has been the emotional journey we've all been on. I'm a meditative person anyway, so I spend a lot of time being introspective. This process, though, has helped me to grow. I've learned that new friends can be made in a room full of adversaries, that egos don't always have to collide, that a cowboy, a preacher, a rocker, a football player, a punk, a gardener, a tough guy, and all the other personalities in the room can get along just fine, even though we're all vying for the exact same goal. Roxanne, I guess what I'm trying to say with all of this is that I'm a high risk, high reward for you at this point of the show. I know you've made a connection with both Percy and Burns with them being here all the way through. If you decide to choose one of them and move forward with this journey, I want you to know that you'll be extremely happy with your selection. That being said, I don't want to lose the Roxanne I began to know. Wild's letter was so cute and it made me laugh and smile. The funniest part I found about his letter was that when I, when I eliminated him the first time, it was because his, first of all, his writing was messy. And then the second part is that it was a mystery story and I was really bothered by his words about you know killing kill your family and um, like it was very violent 
And then afterwards, I thought, oh, you know, the Romeo and Juliet story, that, that must have been what he was doing, which is why I thought, oh, I should give him another, another chance. And then he says, um, um, at confession the first night, karma came back and kicked me in the rear. Um, sharing my story idea at first with the guys, they all thought the idea of Romeo and Juliet finish was a nice touch. But after being the first one eliminated, the guys keep reminding me that it is not cool to kill the girl you're trying to court. <laughs> <laughs> I put it all on the line tonight. Um, one line I used in my, my poem was high risk, high reward. Um, you know, for her to pick me, she's going to have to really believe, you know, fate's going to have to step in here. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. The moment has arrived. We're down to the last three. This has been a very difficult decision for Roxanne to make. Please approach your mailboxes. I personally have had no regrets about anything I've done on the show. I've been completely honest with all the guys. Everything I say to you, I repeat back to them verbatim and say, this is, how, this is what I said about you. Um, just so you know, because all this is going to come out in the end. So my only real goal of this was to be completely honest with myself and with everyone involved. Obviously, my time with her has been extremely condensed. Connection-wise, <sighs> Burns has never really shared too, too much of his letters, where Percy's a little bit more open that, you know, um, any questions, anything like that. So I think it's a toss-up. I really don't know. Burns did have a great picnic with Roxanne. Burns is playing it rather close to the vest right now, and I think that's because uh, we're coming very close to the crunch. We're almost done here. And I think that a uh, competitive advantage is good for both of us. So I respect his decision not to tell me too much about it, and uh, I didn't press him. And will the dear John please remain standing? My purpose in life is to inspire truth, courage, and fun. Um, I want to follow my heart and my soul. Gentlemen, will those who have been asked to stay another day please take their place by the fire? And will the dear John please remain standing? Oscar Wilde, it's been quite a journey and I congratulate you on your efforts. You may say goodbye to the suitors and then you will pack up your things and you will leave the Kicking Horse Mountain Resort. Goodbye. Dear John, I know you were the wild card, but I'm afraid I have to say goodbye. Your letters make me smile. You are so cute, genuine, down to earth, and you can really tell you have a great heart. Perhaps it might have been different if we had the chance to chat, but unfortunately fate did not bring that to happen. I got more from the other letters, more intensity, which I was attracted to. There's something special about you, and I know you will find that special someone that is right for you. Take good care. Roxanne. It was uh, an opportunity which I wanted to start proving myself to Roxanne. I definitely got caught up in some of the letters like the guys have been. Um, it, I think it would have turned out for me personally uh, a lot different if I would have been here from the get-go. He's a really genuine, sweet, nice, kind guy with a great heart. Um, but I'm not sure that we would be a fit for each other and need a little bit more. Um, and this is what I'm sensing, just more intensity, more passion, more, uh, more depth. Um, than I did receive from him. Shelley and Burns are left to woo Roxanne. Who will she choose as her final suitor? 
Good morning, gentlemen. Down to the two final suitors. But the fun's not over just yet. And Roxanne has a few words she'd like to share with you before your next field challenge. Roxanne. Good morning, suitors. We've certainly come a long way together, and now I face the most difficult yet exciting choice ahead of me. When this show came on, I thought, what a perfect opportunity um, as I'm kind of shifting uh, my career to also, as I'm becoming more soulful and, and spiritual myself, to attract then a mate who is uh, going to be having the same sort of values and, and different sorts of things that they're looking at. In the very beginning of this show, it was really obvious that there were nine guys in that room that were ganging up on me. Uh, they all saw that I was the biggest threat in the room, and they all went way out of their way to make sure that everybody knew that uh, they didn't like me, they didn't want to be around me, and they were intimidated by me. But at the same time, there was only nine guys in that room ganging up on me, and they needed more guys. I'm still here, and they're all gone. I'm surprised to be in the final two. I'm not surprised Shelly's here. He's, uh, I had him pegged as probably, you know, at least top three right, right from the get-go. Uh, he's slick, he's got all the right moves. Um, and I think the genuine side in him is starting to come out, so it makes it even, even more difficult. Good luck on your final task. And remember, at the end of the day, you have both made this an amazing journey for me. Suitors, I would like you to meet Mike McPhee. He's a photographer extraordinaire here at the Kicking Horse Mountain Resort. Gentlemen. Good to meet you guys. Congratulations on being the final two. Thank you. Mike is here because as part of your next field challenge, gentlemen, you're going to have to photograph your idea of an amazing date with Roxanne. So you will need these. And Mike, take it away. Well, guys, um, obviously you want to portray some visual ideas to Roxanne. We've already uh, seen your writing ability. So the idea is to experiment with your creative visualization and uh, get metaphorical with it. The first tracks through the snow, the beginning of your relationship, the flame of love. And, uh, and, and, really, and really try to think about what you want to say to her through these photos. Um, use, use light to your advantage, use composition to your advantage and uh, do a heck of a lot of experimenting. We need to be up there for the sunset. So a little bit later in the afternoon, that would be awesome. Hmm. I really just don't know where to start with this. She needs to know that there's a massage in this evening. Take a look at this. That's going to come in handy. Wow, this is harder than it looks. We're gonna take some shots of the uh, steam sauna, all covered and dripping in steam. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, it's cold. Uh, we're gonna take some shots of the hot tub, steaming up in the uh, in the cold winter air. Nice. And uh, we're gonna take some shots in my bedroom. Unreal. I feel the romance building. We need a glass of champagne, two glasses of champagne. We need the sunlight streaming through them. Is it okay if I hold your hand? Yes. Okay. Then I'll let you. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Your hand could be famous one day. Well, definitely sushi for dinner. She did mention in one of her um, uh, shadow interviews that sushi is her favorite food. Oh, that's a nice picture. That's the money shot right there. So obviously I'm really desperate for a date, so right. <laughs> I need to sell this. It's down to two, so could you just describe the goat cheese? Sure, uh, the goat cheese is a nice uh, mild tender cheese. Uh, we bread it with, uh, I would recommend breading it with a little pepper and uh, just to fire it up a little bit. So it goes a little mild and sweet. Uh, then we have a nice uh, beet chutney that goes along with it. Wraps it up pretty nice. And uh, some balsamic drizzle and uh, some crostinis and uh, you guys can chat the night away over that. Beautiful. And that's what we're gonna do. Burns 
and Shelley are putting together their photo journals and writing their final letters, inviting Roxanne on an amazing date. I haven't laid everything out on the table for Roxanne, but um, I've definitely given her what I think I can give any girl that I've never met before um, through letters. And um, well, we'll see what she has to say tomorrow. I think I've uh, invested as much as my heart as I can in someone I've never met, uh, which is really bizarre to kind of give so much uh, in front of cameras, in front of crew, uh, in front of nine other guys who were all here to do the same thing. And it is really just a completely weird phenomenon that I'm in right now. Didn't think that I would actually feel anything. So I'm a little caught off guard by that. That's probably adding to my mental fatigue. I think he's been closed for a long time, and I think this really opened him up, and hopefully now, you know, him putting this out there will bring him the person that he needs in his life. nervous. Mm -hmm. You have a very big decision ahead of you. I do. This is the final delivery. It's down to the two final suitors. How confident are you that you're going to make the right decision? Um, I'm pretty confident that I will make the, the right decision from my gut, but um, it's a difficult one because uh, all the guys were great and of course these two men have shared a lot of themselves through this journey and to have to send one home is a, is a difficult task. I decided to keep my scrapbook simple. No frills to cover up the true essence of what I am. Take joy in the simple things in life, Roxanne, because they are what makes you who you are. I truly believe I'm the best choice. I will wait to see if you agree. Thank you, R. Burns. I find comfort in the thought that, for the most part, I'll understand you. We'll be worlds apart on some things, but you and I will know how to talk to one another, we'll know how to listen, but I know I won't get the essence of who you are until we spend some time together. Two suitors stand before me. But only one of you will meet Roxanne in person and face to face. After all the challenges and after all the eliminations, do you have anything you would like to say to one another? Well played, sir. You as well. Good to meet you too. Good to meet you. Suitors, I would ask you now to approach the table. You may both open your boxes. You may both read your notes. Gentlemen, please follow the instructions. As per my note, I grab my luggage and I'm heading down the gondola. It said, now this is a doozy, please take your luggage and get onto the gondola. So, who knows what's going on. I would assume that I'm just going home and that's that. I feel in my soul really, really sad for him, that he'll be disappointed. However, I think that this is probably meant for, to be for him. I think he's been closed for a long time, and I think this really opened him up, and hopefully now, you know, him putting this out there will bring him the person that he needs in his life. Uh, yeah, I was, I was very surprised to open, as much, open up as much as I did. I thought I'd come in and be a little reserved, and then I think probably, Two letters in, I decided, you know what, I'm here, I'm gonna try to just give it my all and, you know, learn about myself as much as I can, as, as well as Roxanne, and yeah, I think everyone kind of tended to do that. Through this whole process, the one thing I know exactly what I want. I'm not gonna settle for anything less. Would you like to tell me what your note said, please? Well, it was really very simple. It says, please remain here at the Eagle Eye restaurant. And what do you think that could mean? I think that could mean another twist in the plot. I think it could mean 
that uh, she's here somewhere could also mean that she's at the bottom waiting for burns. I have no idea, and quite frankly, it's killing me. This might help. This is a letter for you from Roxanne. Thank you. This whole experience has helped people grow and bond together and realize stuff about themselves. And when you're thinking about a soulmate, it's not like you can say, here's my list and I pick that guy. It's more, what's meant to be is meant to be. And if you're true to your heart and soul, if you are ready, you will, he will come into your life and you guys will, you'll just know. Um, I think somebody, people always say that it feels like home. Percy, shall we? Goodbye. Roxanne? Yes. Burns, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Coming all this way and going through all of this work, it wasn't for nothing. This isn't a sad experience. It's just, you know, I don't want to come in second in anything in life. So, um, Roxanne, if you're watching this, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I don't know you. Um, it seems to me like she needs a lot and uh, she needs a guy who's gonna provide for her and uh, take care of her. And I don't know that that's exactly Burns' style. And we'll find that out at the end of the day today. Dear Burns, as usual, your writing blew me away. The photos were so creative. Every man on the earth will be cursing you when they see them. <laughs> you had me at Snow Angel. <laughs> and the picture... <laughs> That was good. Good touch. Yeah, it just came to me, you know. <laughs> Health, family, friends, and enjoying the simple things are my priorities, similar to you. I've learned so much on this journey, what my purpose is, what I want my career to be, and what I need in a soulmate. Someone very much like me, but also has qualities that balance me out, like patience. And help me with my, I'm kind of being neurotic a little bit. Really? Yeah, a little, Get out of here. Just, just, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored, I'm truly honored, to go on a date with someone such a sensitive and amazing and wonderful as you, my final suitor, Roxanne. Awesome. <laughs> so, do you accept? I accept. Yeah? I accept. Fully. Okay, there you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> she kind of took my breath away. Uh, very beautiful, very well-spoken, uh, brilliant, passionate, uh, pretty much just an amazing person. Ooh. <laughs> wow, it's a tree. Look at that. <laughs> it's funny, you point, point one place, but look another. <laughs> look at that. Wow, that's, that's amazing. No, no, look at that. How'd they do that? <laughs> He has such a great sense of humor, and uh, I'm very attracted to his, his soul, his, uh, his passion, and his uniqueness, and his, um, he has this amazing, you know, don't, don't really care about what people think, and so we're very similar in a lot of, uh, in a lot of different ways. Oh, he, he did that for me. No. No. Good, thanks, how are you? You're good, you're good. Lovely. Thank you, you do too. Everything's almost out there. So it's, from now you could either say, like physical chemistry aside, you could either say you like the person or you don't. Which takes a lot of people, months, years, decades, to figure out if, you know, they have the same goals, same passions, uh, even if they just, have the same kind of general feeling about, about the world. Wow. 
first course tonight, uh, Burns has selected a pepper uh, crusted goat cheese served with some beetroot chutney, some mescaline greens there, and uh, some crostinis, roast garlic. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very elbow. Yeah, I'll help you. <laughs> you got a little, a little something there. <laughs> There's definite chemistry, like our souls are, are definitely connected and I think because we've been through the same experience. I think I helped him in his journey. He seemed really closed kind of at first and I think this journey helped him to be a little bit more open. Similar to me, I was kind of closed and opened up a little bit. He mentioned that he wants to, you know, to really start to move and shake his life up a little bit. The main courses this evening, uh, chosen some uh, pan-seared ahi tuna, some Mediterranean vegetables, and a tomato broth wow. with a Rui crouton. That Enjoy. looks so Thank amazing. You Thank you. I showed her, you know, a taste of what I'm actually like in person. I definitely connected with her, and I feel that she's just an amazing person that I would want in my life no matter what. So. Hopefully there's a, a meeting point where we can maybe teach each other. Um, I can teach her how to be a goof. Not that she doesn't know already, but I can teach her to maybe just not care, not think about next week, but just think about today. And she can teach me that learning about next week is important. Any girl would be so lucky to be in this position to have men writing to them and supporting them in this way. I didn't expect it to hit me this way. I mean. Um, it was such an amazing experience. They're wonderful men, each in their own way. I will continue to write letters and I will expect the same from, from my friends, family, and, and future soulmate. Thank you.